This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I could see uh, still people are joining in. Okay, uh, thank you for joining. Good evening, everyone. So if you look at uh, my screen sharing, okay, it, it's coming up. Okay, so what I was telling is like, uh, these are the 10 different modules that we will be discussing for the next 10 days or uh, 10 weeks, in fact. Okay, so it is coming up. No, 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 the screen is coming up. Okay, so now it should be. Okay, now we got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so these are the 10 different modules that we have framed. So as I just uh, told you, I want to quickly reiterate. So every Saturday, we will have a kind of uh, theoretical plus practical and demo session from us. And then on Sunday, every alternate day, you have to kind of do the practice. So we will be here with you. If in case you are stuck somewhere, you are not able to execute, not able to write that script or not able to execute that, we will help you out how to fix that, how to, uh, uh, I mean, how to remediate the situation and uh, keep moving. Okay, so we want everyone to kind of learn and then uh, do some hands-on work. That That's the way I, we feel like uh, it will be effective training. So we are going to um, stay connected for the next 10 weeks at least. And then uh, we are going to cover these 10 modules. Okay, so you can uh, take it over, uh, Napoleon. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. Uh, please let me know once you can able to see my screen. Yes, Nipun, we can able to see your screen. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the confirmation. All right. So, uh, welcome to Python class. So, um, you know, so as uh, Stan said, so it's a uh, you know very basic thing. Uh, start from the basic uh, for you know learners. So uh, we are going to start. Uh, you know very basic to somewhat uh, uh, advanced. So today we will cover uh, mostly related with the introduction and installation stuff and uh, how uh, you know the Python is uh, working in reality, in real uh, IT, <clears throat> okay. So uh, before starting with the introduction of uh, Python, so uh, I just want to uh, know from uh, everyone, so uh, what do you think about Python? So have you used before the any scripting? Or have you written any uh, scripting using Python. So I just want to, uh, you know, understand from you guys. I never used, but I know this is programming okay. language. I, I have seen somewhere. Uh, basically, um, um, it belongs to .NET. Uh, mm. so, yeah. So I know how uh, Python will work, but I don't know anything about Python. Thanks for the information, Pepin. So, uh, yeah. Anyone else? Hello. Yeah, this is Noah. Uh, I used Python for my uh, some of the projects. Uh, okay. I just copy paste the uh, codings and they edited uh, for my projects and uh, successfully done the project. So, I just want to learn the basic properly so I can okay. go forward to do some other project, my own coding and everything. Sure, sure, sure. Now, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Few of them is not uh, used before. A few of them heard, uh, you know, it's a, a powerful tool, and few of them is used uh, based on the, uh, you know, internet support and also, uh, you know, some other existing scrape. So, okay. So, uh, before uh, going to that, so it, the, this is the one we can able to get all the uh, syntax logic, how it is working. Um, you know, compare with the other scripting languages. So how it gonna be, uh, you know, we can learn all those things. So it's basically uh, at the end of the uh, day, so you supposed to know how uh, the script is, Python script is, how we can able to write this script. So based on the syntax, uh, program standards and uh, best practices and all. Okay, so, so okay, so, Python, uh, how many of you know so Python is a scripting language or programming language? So there are two terms uh, which is used uh, uh, in IT, right? So 
dot net uh, we we know is a programming language java so some other thing so like that um, and powershell bash shell these are the scripting languages so in uh, so what do you think in python so is a programming language or scripting language i feel it is both yeah, both to me to me exactly. it's uh, programming all right yep yeah. so uh, it's both actually uh, so okay. python is a widely used uh, scripting uh, in uh, it infrastructure and uh, programming languages uh, in terms of uh, it application development <clears throat> so it is used widely um, because of its uh, supported modules i mean uh, in terms of libraries so we can use uh, widely for uh, all other um, it it infra and um, you know and data scientists also they are using uh, so there are a lot of uh, you know platform which is using for python because of its uh, readability uh, understandability and also it's uh, very popular in place okay so, all right so um, in terms of python so python is an uh, scripting language uh, and also programming language as i said right so uh, we are just going to uh, make make use of python in terms of uh, it infra automation so um, before starting with that so the uh, python is an interpreted language so um, can anyone um, you know uh, what is interpreted and compiler Okay, so in programming, there are three uh, three uh, items we supposed to learn. So one is assembler, and second one is compiler, and third one is interpreter. Let me quickly share my another thing. Just wait. Can you able to see my notepad? Yes. Okay. So first one is assembler. Second one is compiler. Then one is interpreter. Okay. Like so, those three items are um, used in uh, most of the programming languages and also scripting languages. So, uh, okay, so before proceeding with that, so what is this uh, tools is, uh, okay, so we are typing the code uh, in the editors, right? But how it is translated into machine code, those process will be handled by these tools. For example, so you, you are going to write a Python script. So you are going to write a Python script in the editor. So once you, uh, you know, completed your uh, work, so you are going to execute the code. So once you execute that, so the machine will take care of your uh, code uh, into the consideration and it will convert into the machine code. The user code will be converted to machine code. So there is a process is happening, right? So those process will be handled by these three uh, tools. So basically, the assembly is the old one, which is used in uh, the microcontroller. Have you heard of microcontroller, microprocessor, those things, uh, system engineering stuff? So at the time, so we supposed to use uh, assembler. The compiler is, uh, you know, again uh, the C, C plus uh, plus, um, you know, those. Uh, Java also we are using a uh, compiler. So if you uh, used before those languages, so you might know uh, the compiler process. So it will just convert the code into the machine code. And the same way interpreter, uh, 
also going to convert the code into machine code so the interpreter is uh, mostly used in uh, python and also powershell and uh, other scripting languages so let's see okay so as i said the python is an interpreted uh, language so if you compare with the uh, both compiler and the interpreter so assembly is the very old one so anyway uh, we are not uh, you know going to use that uh, uh, in the in the um, you know environment so the compiler and the interpreter both are is very popular in place so if we see uh, interpreted uh, is uh, to translate the program into line by line so if you have hundreds of line so it will execute one by one only but uh, whereas the compiler will scan the entire program and translate at, at the whole so if you have uh, 100 lines of code it will take uh, all hundreds and it will translate into the machine code so this is the difference uh, between the interpreter and compiler So any doubts with that? So what is interpreted and compiler? Um, uh, in uh, in other programming like we, languages, we can use uh, we can say something like git a uh, git compiler, something like a git. Uh, I mean, dot net yes. use git compiler. So git com JIT compiler, right? In dot net. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So dot net uh, is used in compiler. Uh, so the all the codes are uh, taken in uh, into the consideration it's executing into machine code so those are compiler so here we are using interpret i mean python's interpreter language so uh, that's why uh, it's execute line by line for any terms something like jit uh, because in dotnet we say jit compiler so here any other terms something like that uh, sorry uh, can you comment please uh, in C sharp uh, and Java, we use uh, we, we call it as JIT compiler, which will which will do all this process. So yeah. for here, Python the interpreter. Okay. Is there we any are not. We are not. That? Yeah, we are not going to use anything. So it's a technical term which I'm explaining. I'm explaining. So uh, Python is using interpreter in order to execute the program, a script. It's an interpreter language. That's what uh, I mean. Okay, that one that one i got it but uh my question is is there any any uh, like uh jit compiler is there any such programming behind this no 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 uh, nothing actually so this is uh the basic one which is uh, available by default okay. so we don't need to uh you know do anything like others okay all right Okay, so I will move to next one. So, okay, as I said, the Python is an interpreter language. So it will do, uh, you know, come, uh, it will run uh, line by line execution. And the second one is an dynamically typed language. So what is dynamically typed language means? Uh, have you heard about data types? Yes. So, all right. So, what is data types? Uh, if you ask me, so data types is a uh, category of uh, data. Uh, for example, uh, if you if the numbers are comes in integers, and uh, um, so the characters a. Right. So those numbers are comes on to the uh, integer data type and uh, A, B, so single letters will be considered as a okay, character and uh, more than one character, which means um, you know more than one character is called uh, a string. Okay, so we have some other data types as well. Um, true or false comes under boolean. So we will learn about data types uh, later in detail. 
so uh, for now i'm just giving the, how it is categorized okay all right so those are the uh, four thing uh, we supposed to use uh, in all the languages so integers are uh, the numbers which uh, in use so we have uh, float and table as well so those data types is uh, decimal points uh, the data, data values and the character uh, each uh, you know letters is considered as a character and uh, um, you know more than one letters is called a string it can be a word it can be a sentence and um, the boolean is uh, something um, you know the true or false zeros and ones is supposed to be a boolean value so we will learn about this one letter but uh, uh, you know data type is to segregate or categorize the data based on the groups okay. All right. so uh, in python so it's a dynamically typed so why is it dynamically typed usually in other programming language we have to mention uh, if you are creating a variable we have to mention the data type first so for example i'm going to uh, get a name from users then i am if i'm going to mention the uh, variable called age so i need to mention the data type before then only system will understand the age is supposed to be an integer okay so uh, this is this is how we supposed to uh, Fine. Or declare a variable in other programming languages, other languages like .NET or C sharp. But here in Python, we no need to mention any data type when you are creating a variable. So just you have to create a variable, you can assign the values. So why? Because the Python will automatically take care of data types based on the value which we are going to store so if i'm storing a 10 on uh, age uh, variable then the age will be considered as a integer automatically so that's why python called is a dynamically typed language any questions with that it will automatically identify the variable type yes it automatically identify the variable data types based on the holding value is it clear uh, yes. so one quick question so here you mentioned ag equal to 10 right? so what will happen uh, let's say in next line i'm just mentioning ag equal to uh, instead of 10 uh, mistakenly i have put some strings so how it will okay. behave so here um, okay when 10 was assigned with the age it will be considered as a string i mean an integer so now mm -hmm. it is overrided with the value i mean uh, different value so it's a string right okay so if once mm -hmm. it is overrided then the data type will be changed but it's, it's again it's again based and there are two type of uh, um conversion types available so one is uh, uh implicit conversion second one is uh, split conversion so we will learn about that one later but uh, why i'm saying uh, some data types can be uh, merged i mean can be uh, overrided for example if you are going to uh, change integers to string it will be easy okay but if you are going to change string to integer it will be difficult since uh, it, it's a characters a um, number of characters is here numbers mm -hmm. okay so that's why uh, you have to be careful when you are converting the data types to one uh, object one data type to another data type so uh, uh, so based on this code python uh, will throw any error uh, so that yes 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 data type uh, yeah data type error also we will get um you know uh, we will get all those uh, issues uh, if you are doing the wrong uh, data type conversion and also assignments okay thanks okay all right so next one so uh, python is a garbage collector Okay, so the garbage collected uh, is the one to perform all the memory uh, management. So 
for example so if it will keep track of all the objects in memory and whenever the reference count is going to be dropped then it's immediately removed so which mean uh, it will check periodically on the unused variables so there are some times so you will create a variable for uh, for some purpose unfortunately you could not make it uh, this you could not make use of the variable in the script uh, so at the time what will happen the memory uh, somewhat uh, you know waste right so at the time uh, python will automatically keep on track of all the objects which is really in use if it is not in use then it will um, you know it will inform them to you remove actually so the garbage collection will happen uh, in python automatically and a uh, few uh, best practices in terms of uh, uh, memory management we have to handle with uh, whenever you are going to open a session uh, on a remote session you supposed to close the session once the task has been completed at the end uh, so at the end of your script you have to close the session and uh, also if you are going to open a database connection so at the end of the uh, operation you have to supposed to uh, you know close the database connect connectivity so those are the things we really supposed to do manually sometimes it will be taken care uh, if it is not in use and also if it is uh, inactive for some idle time uh, so, so is there any way to manually dispose uh, I mean manually enforce the and manually force the garbage collector to take active instead of uh, waiting for the automatic memory management yeah, yeah. So uh, if you are using an IDE and also it will show actually. Okay. Right, so next one is high level programming language. So there are two, uh, you know, languages we supposed to uh, go through. So one is low level and the second one is high level. The low level is mainly used, uh, you know, assembler. So the Nicole, assembler uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, I think yes. we are just seeing the notepad only. If you are flipping between notepad and uh, PowerPoint, uh, oh, we are just seeing okay. only the notepad. Yeah, we are not seeing both yeah. the screens. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I thought it's visible for you. No, no, no. I th uh, can can uh, others confirm? Are you able to see both uh, uh, notepad as well as the slide deck? Oh, yeah, only, no. Oh, only notepad, right? Okay, okay. okay see, okay, uh, okay. maybe you can quickly summarize, okay, just for the interest sure, of sure. others. So yep. there are uh, three different uh, kind of techniques where uh, you can uh, convert the kind of written code for uh, machine to understand. Okay, so we used to have assembler in the past when uh, the hardware used to be uh, uh, predominantly like we used to work with physical hardware, but then uh, th things have changed, right? Now uh, it's all virtual systems or uh, cloud-based system. Now predominantly we have only two type of techniques. One is interpreter and uh, the compiler, whereas the interpreter it can go and check each lines of code and then confirm back whether uh, the li written lines of code has got any issues or errors and then it will execute so python is kind of coming under the interpreter category whereas compiler category is predominant in uh, the oops i um, mean uh, the java c c plus plus and the other category of languages so that is what we that is where we started with right so uh, maybe like uh, you, you you guys be interactive okay so i mean i was i just stepped away and came back then i noticed like we are not able to see the uh, both the screens so anyways i think uh, this is the difference between compiler and interpreter and uh, maybe we talked about uh, uh, the data collection. types right yeah data yes, types sir. followed by garbage collection yeah maybe you can quickly uh, uh, give a recap on the slide alone so that uh, they follow sure, along sure. yeah all right yeah so uh, the first one we uh, you know when we discussed about uh, you know python as an interpreted language so we just uh, discussed about various types of uh, uh, you know machine language conversion so uh, the assembly is as uh, said uh, it's a world one uh, it's, uh, you know for example say microcontroller microprocessors all those things uh, comes used uh, you know assembly language and here um, compiler is used in such a way uh, in dotnet java um, language so interpreted is uh, is a most uh, way to execute your code line by line and uh, python is used in um, interpreted way and uh, it's a dynamically typed since uh, usually in other language we have supposed to mention the data type before uh, the variable actually uh, but here the 
variable will be uh, taken um, you know the data type will be taken based on the variable value so what are the values you are going to assign it will be taken uh, it based on the value the data type will be taken care by uh, you know python uh, the third one is a garbage collected so it periodically check the uh, variables so whether it in use or not um, the next one we supposed to start with the uh, high level programming language so there are two uh, language uh, you know uh, we supposed to mention the one is low level and uh, high level the low level is used uh, you know uh, long back so as i said it's used in assembler language and uh, nowadays all programs are uh, high level languages since it's using a compiler or interpreter in order to translate the code uh, into the machine code right so python uh, we are using interpreter uh, i mean python used interpreter so that's why uh, it's a high level language okay so any any questions okay so next one uh, python is simple and easy to learn the syntax and uh, the readability is something uh, you know easily we can able to read all the uh, thing so if you are going to take it from the internet and if you are going to uh, take a reference from the colleague uh, existing code uh, from the repository then uh, you, uh, once you understand uh, each and every syntax and uh, you know how it is uh, differentiated based on the logic then you can able, easily understand uh, the structure and also you can able to modify the code based on your understanding and requirement all right so the next one is it is it supports multiple programming paradigms okay so before uh, going to that uh, so we supposed to understand what is paradigms so paradigm is nothing but is a uh, you have if you are going to give a um, solution to the problem it's called paradigm so paradigm can also be termed as a method to solve some problem or to some task okay so programming paradigm so using the programming uh, approach you are going to solve the problem it's called uh, you know programming paradigm so the technically we are going to use some languages in order to solve the problem right so uh, we have different kind of program paradigms uh, so imp imperative programming uh, paradigm declarative so imperative having few more uh, types procedural object oriented parallel and the declarative we have a logical uh, functional database processing approach okay but uh, in in okay so for few uh, languages it supports only few uh, paradigms uh, but in python we can uh, manage uh, you know, we can make use of uh, you know more programming languages i mean programming paradigms So, for example, we, uh, Python supports object-oriented. In order to, uh, if you are going to create a object, a class, uh, methods uh, like uh, other languages, uh, Java, .NET, you can make use of uh, Python for creating all those stuffs. And also, you can make use of Python for uh, procedural standard uh, scripting and also functional programming. So, you can make use of Python for any any type of uh, programming paradigms all right so any questions with the definition of python so python is an interpreted language dynamically typed garbage collected high level programming language it has a simple and easy to learn and readability is high and it supports multiple programming paradigms so any questions or any doubts with the definition of python right okay so where we are using python so python is used in many platforms so in apt application in it infrastructure automation in it infrastructure automation it's not about a single pla single platform so it can be used in cloud winter unix database storage network and other other platform as well so why because python is uh, you know why is uh, independent language so we can make use of python in uh, all platform as well 
and also uh, it is used by researchers mathematicians data scientists because of its uh, you know easy understanding of syntax and also wide range of open source packages so there are a lot of packages available and uh, based on that uh, we can exp we can make use of the package for our problems and also we can uh, leverage uh, you know those things and we can uh, extend the scope uh, if you understand the python very well you, you can take the uh, module and you can able to add few more uh, features into that for your requirement so are we good any questions So hope everyone will be able to answer if someone asks you what you what is python definition or where we are using python at, at a very high level so this slide conveys that right it has got the definition and it has got the use case where we are generally using it i think i'm clear um napoleon yeah 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 it's yeah. clear thank you so you said yeah just a history about python uh, so the initial development uh, is designed by the uh, Gudo Van Rosum and introduced in 20, 20 Feb uh, 1991. So after that, it was uh, you know uh, moved. Uh, it was taken by uh, Python Software Foundation, and now it is handled by Python Software Foundation license. This comes under uh, license. I mean, it's open source only, but uh, there is a standard uh, way of managing things. And it supports, uh, you know, all the plat all the OS platforms like uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android. So, uh, you know, that's why if you are creating a script, it can be used in multiple OSs. And uh, the last one is a case sensitive. Yes. So, if you are going to write the code, you have to be careful when you are, uh, you know, uh, adding the keyword. So, for example, if you are going to add, uh, you know, if condition is supposed to be small so if you make use of uh, you know capital i and f it will be a different one and uh, if you are going to use the variable as age small letters then if you are going to uh, use capital letter then it will be considered as a different uh, variable so it won't take the existing value since this case sent you okay All right so next one is the flavors of python so if you heard about uh, you know uh, anaconda uh, c python and the other uh, python so it's a different flavors actually so python is a single platform i mean single uh, um, distribution uh, thing but it has lot of uh, flavors how uh, even if uh, all flavors having its own uh, functionality so for example uh, c python is mostly um, used in um, you know web development application development and scripting so it, it will be easy to uh, okay it's based on the uh, requirement you have to select the flavors so in our class we are just supposed to use uh, only the uh, basic python only but if in reality so if you want to uh, create a web development then you can go with uh, flask django and other uh, you know python uh, modules so anaconda is the uh, next one i supposed to use uh, for machine learning and data science activities so if you are going to uh, make use of uh, python then you can go with anaconda flavors for in python so if you are going to you, uh, you know integrate the python with the dotnet uh, platform then you can go you can make use of iron python so in the visual studio id itself uh, you can able to find iron python okay this zaitan is mainly used for java which will another month so if you already know java very well so but if, if you are going to integrate the python into the java um, application you can make use of jaita so jupyter notebook so whenever you are going to uh, create a inter interface like uh, interactive programming environment uh, so you can make use of uh, Z uh, jupyter notebook so for example uh, so if you are going to uh, 
type your code into the uh, you know web based interactive uh, application uh, your voice is breaking is it only for me or to everyone uh, raja here okay so I can think you raja no i am able to hear you properly so i think raja you can reconnect possibly can i just confirm is it like okay yeah, yeah. to everybody yeah it is it is good for me uh okay fine yeah yeah okay okay yeah. then so, might be okay so have you used any um, you know web based executor uh, executor i mean uh, editor for example so in there is some uh, editors available online you can type your java code you can type your uh, python powershell or any kind of code so uh, there is a uh, you know page available you have to uh, type your code and you can able to execute uh, on the console itself on the web, web page itself so those applications are uh, you know is created uh, using the jupyter notebook so it's an interactive programming environment right so you have to type the code and you can able to execute you can able to find get the uh, you know output on the other console so those kind of uh, uh, web based interactive program also you can able to do that using a uh, cyan notebook So next one, PyPy. So PyPy is the first uh, Python implementation uh, with the GAT compiler. So uh, as you uh, okay, so if you want to uh, you know make use of GAT compiler, then you can go with PyPy. Stackless Python. So Stackless Python is other C Python supported micro threads. So if you are going to uh, do any uh, development using uh, micro threads and all, you can go with Stackless Python. And next one is Micro Python. so for microcontrollers related stuff you can make use of microcontroller micro python so there are few more uh, you know flavors also available so i listed uh, only the main uh, python based on the segregation of work so for example it's so a .net you can make use of uh, in python for java you can make use of uh, jython for uh, web based uh, interactive console you can make use of jupyter so all those uh, majority of uh, flavors i have included here next one advantages of python so the there are some advantage i mean more advantages uh, available and also few disadvantages but uh, i am not i won't tell uh, state uh, disadvantage but uh, it might be uh, we we might face this uh, disadvantages uh, during the uh, execution during the development process so first we will go with the advantage okay so and the first advantage is uh, you know it's simple to use and it's simple to understand so second one say so open source so we no need to uh, get the license and uh, other things so for dotnet and all we supposed to get uh, visual studio license like right? so here is a open source so we can just go and download the packages and we can install it uh, on our uh, systems so their third one is uh, productivity uh, has been increased so whenever you are going to uh, make make use of python so the comparatively uh, the script will execute uh, on 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 all os platform right so uh, you can able to find the productivity so even though it's a multiple uh, you know platform so it's an interpreter language uh, so as as we discussed uh, it will run uh, line by line so it will even though if you have thousands of line in the um, you know editors in the script file so it will t- run run line by line if any issues happen in between it will stop the execution okay so extensive library support so there are a lot of uh, you know libraries available so you can go and uh, find the corresponding one which you supposed to take it for your requirement and if you want you can able to modify the uh, you know library as well okay so next one is dynamically typed so as we discussed uh, the data type is automatically taken care so we no need to mention any data type uh, when you are going to create a variable <coughs> supportability and also support the community so it, it the it uh, has lot of uh, you know advantages right so when compared to discern world edge so it's again something uh, you know same as the advantage so if you see 
say simple is one of the thing so if it is simple sometime what will happen if someone going to read your code it will be easy for them to hack right so the thing you want and um, you know the, the database access layer is still um, you know there are few modules availability uh, they they are still um, you know need some more um, you know development on the database layer and design restriction so when it comes to mvc uh, okay m model view controller have you heard right uh, okay in dot net and all we have mvc pattern see a model view controller so those are um, you know is a design pattern actually so uh, those kind of segregation is not uh, in place so there are some restrictions is there even though if it is there uh, in the in these different uh, flavors and uh, next one is a week uh, in uh, mobile computing and browsers so for browser uh, we have selenium um, so selenium is a python based uh, uh, you know tool right so you can make use of selenium for browser related activity but still uh, there are some uh, you know less portion of com mobile computing and other stuffs and uh, next one is a speed limitation Okay, so when, when we are going to integrate multiple languages, so you can integrate uh, Python, uh, I mean, um, PowerShell into Python, you can call the PowerShell script, you can call the Bash shell script from Python. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, integration also possible. So at that time, we might face some uh, limitations in terms of, uh, um, you know, performance, in terms of uh, connectivity and that. So it, it might happen, but not uh, for singular, uh, you know a few codes so if you are going to do for bulk activity if you are going to execute a bulk code then it might be happen okay any questions uh, no questions yeah okay Good. thanks <laughs> Right. So the next one is uh, okay. So the real world Python applications. Okay, it 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 might be surprised if you were not uh, you know sure on this one. So uh, the web. Okay, we can use of uh, we can use Python in different platform, right? So in web app development, uh, we can use uh, Django, Permit, Flask, Bottle uh, for web based application development. So for example, uh, the Instagram it's in real world application right so we are using instagram uh, right so the instagram is developed in django django is here python flavor okay so using django only the instagram uh, was developed so we are we are just using the application but we are not sure which uh, language is supposed to be uh, right it might be a java based application it might be a dot net it might be a java python aspect so the instagram is pure on uh, python so the django is the web framework used to, to develop that uh, application so if you are going to develop a web application you can make use of django permit flask so all those web frameworks so this is the example instagram the next one game development so if you are going to develop a game then you can make use of uh, PySci, pygame so those are the uh, um, um, modules or libraries uh, python libraries actually so it's a, it's a framework here is a module uh, libraries python libraries so using that you can able to extend your scope i mean you can able to achieve uh, uh, you know task so for game development you can make use of this two uh, python based libraries and for example battlefield 2 world of tanks those games are developed uh, using this uh, you know li python libraries so the scientific and numerical applications we can make use of skypy as uh, you know sam you know scientific numerical library and pandas so if you have um, you know understanding of uh, machine language you might aware of uh, pandas so pandas is widely widely used uh, one when it comes to um, data collection data processing uh, data um, you know 
data scientist data analyst process actually so for in reality we have you know this free cad abacus those two applications are used uh, skype by so when it comes to artificial intelligence ai and ml so keras tensorflow you might hear about tensorflow um so the tensorflow skykit so those python packages we can make use of it and uh, the example one is nl tk cafe so those applications are python based so in software development google um, dot com right so those uh, google.com application they did netflix also is a python based application so for software development also we can make use of it so for enterprise and business uh, application odo triton uh, is using python for web strapping application selenium you are the those application uh, in place so the 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 web framework pack python package all those things uh, is based on the python only so if you know the basic python you can make use of those uh, um, you know libraries and then you can able to extend uh, your development so without the basics it is somewhat difficult to uh, make use of all the um, you know frameworks okay so in the language development so python is a long python itself is a language but using python also we can in there are few languages uh, developed uh, the bo swift coffee script cobra so the sorry language is uh, inherited from the python so in the infra automation uh, especially in configuration management in devops so in devops there are a lot of um, you know um, cycle right so in that cycle um, there is a configuration management so in the configuration ci cd pipeline there is a configuration management so under the configuration management there are a lot of tools availability uh, in in it uh, so especially ansible salt stack you might hear about ansible salt stack right so those two uh, configuration management tools is based on the python so without python installation you can't able to install ansible salt stack so those uh, python is the uh, since it's based on python that's why any questions with the uh, real time uh, real world application and also the uh, you know real world uh, usage okay so for some of the use case with respect to infrastructure automation is uh, gathering the server information um, you know it's not only server i can gather the information of uh, network uh, storage database it's just a fetching the information and uh, you can enable to uh, install the necessary packages software tools on the machines so it it's it's can be a multiple i mean different device platform since uh, python is uh, uh, voice independent right so you can make use of python in uh, all other voice platform and also you can um, you know you can perform service management related activities using python in infra capacity management to fetch the uh, you know storage capacity database growth all those things and based on the information you can create a, a table or you can send an email uh, notification so you can perform all those uh, end to end activity license management so in terms of license also you can able to achieve it so configuration management so there are few configuration management tools available so if you already have this tools you can make use of it otherwise uh, you can um, you know do it in uh, python itself so can you give some example like uh, examples on the service management and the license management okay so the service management is uh, purely is mm -hmm. on the, uh, an application service okay uh, okay so on off service okay, stop, stop. yeah on and off okay. yep stop start uh, you know all those okay. things so the license manages uh, mean something related to the uh, you know, application license uh, apache license uh, mm -hmm. database license 
so that uh, so, you know license okay. so is going, going to, to UOL, UOL, going to get UOL, exposure okay yeah uol uosl uh, okay. you know those stuff okay. right uh, so before moving to version i will give you some uh, idea on uh, um, you know info automation so far it's okay any questions yeah okay it's okay yeah so far yeah. right uh, okay how many of you from infra background so um, i mean you, you guys are from infra or um, it or some other field uh, yeah uh, myself uh, raja here i'm from infra okay. uh, so i'm okay. uh, basically like currently working on a uh, linux and unix platform so okay. like uh, yeah also like i'm handling the servers in both physical servers and the cloud servers so okay. i just want to have the experience and want to use it in the real time so okay. we have a lot of physical servers actually so we okay. want to do the automation part with respect to the yeah. certification management and mm -hmm. deployment and mainly like uh to do the firmware upgrade and all these things on the ilo is challenges in my okay. infrastructure so okay. i want to use this opportunity to learn and deploy it yeah sure sure that yeah so yeah uh, okay so the and the um, physical server so you say hp server or ibm yeah. or company yeah we, ha we have HP. like a uh, majorly hp server hp proline and uh, okay. dell servers we have uh, okay dell, okay uh, latest yes yeah, yeah okay yeah so we can um, you know the the after the deployment of physical servers we supposed to do uh, the configuration right so uh, without uh, okay so i am just telling based on my experience so without doing the manual uh, um, you know configuration we can do automated way um, yeah. the ntp and other installation stuff and uh, modification so uh, if you are having ilo access so it can be done uh, you know automation okay yeah yeah i have the ail access yeah okay yeah. okay so yeah it's, there are a lot of opportunities so we just yeah. uh, you know uh, need to okay since you already have the experience uh, you know how it is working manually right you just need to yeah. convert all those sops into the uh, scripted way so, yes so yeah. once yeah. you uh, you know understand the script the logic it will be easy for you yes yes yeah that's the reason okay yeah yeah thank right. you so anyone from other background apart from my infra i are again i am ramnathan from infra background uh, okay. i was working in linux and linux administrator now i am okay. moved to automation team which means i am going to work uh, mostly ansible as well as powershell then shell script now it's a most important for python now i am stepping into python i think it's okay. a great opportunity for my career that's what i am doing in python in the soft myself sure. Yeah, sure, Ram. So since uh, as as I said, Ansible is purely on Python. Uh, so you 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 can make use of Ansible modules, and also if you want to create your Python, you can create your own script and embed into the uh, Ansible, um, you know, module. So for you, it's uh, exactly. you know, very good. Yeah. It will be honest. Earlier I wasn't completely. I was in for section. Now I recently two months only I moved okay. to automation team. So I am yeah. stepping into automation now. So these are things that are most helpful for my careers. So I am sure, looking sure. forward to meeting new people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So the the main is uh, you know it's a very basic thing. So even if you don't have experience with the programming, uh, not having um, you know not having um, written any code, it's fine. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. we are just going to start from the scratch only. So it will okay. be easy for you to understand. So today is mostly related with the theoretical, and um, uh, so maybe is you can able to understand more. But uh, sometime the how uh, the uh, the terms, for mm -hmm. example, the interpreter compiler. So those terms it will be uh, hard to understand a little bit. 
but uh, going forward it will be easy since this, uh, you know we are going to start uh, only with the uh, scripting uh, you know stuff right it will be easy for them oh. to understand okay sir. okay so so whenever you um, you know uh, get hard i mean i uh, could not able to understand anything please let me you know stop me any any time so no issues i will um, you know yes yes plain back um, you know multiple times also fine for yeah, me definitely. yeah like currently i am doing one of the use cases uh, in place upgrade which is i am going to uh, working on that one and so i am doing for in place upgrade windows as well as unix in this perspective mm -hmm. i am taking some of the support from you and stan if you need any i reach out to you definitely so uh, okay. yeah definitely okay <laughs> okay so i hope uh, you know all of all of for uh, you know all of them from uh, in for the background uh, so probably i will uh, you know start as planning the automation with a span over and uh, you know things since you already know uh, you know uh, you know all of them but uh, i'm just giving heads up on that okay so nowadays uh, all it um, you know uh, company is moving towards automation um so you already know about it now the um, chat gpt general is very popular so ai has become popular nowadays so where it started it started from uh, you know few years back uh, so since uh, everyone started with the automation devops comes to into pictures first it started with the um, you know uh, agile process and then it moved to devops and then it moved to um, you know aiml things so now uh, we have uh, you know a lot of improvements in the ai platforms so the script is is uh, you know mainly used in all other journey so the script is uh, used uh, um, you know in basic uh, you know windows windows itself for example in windows 2012 also we have a script um the batch bad script bat you you know right bad script so script is available uh, at the beginning of the uh, os platform so bad script shell script and uh, python sorry powershell powershell is already included with the micro uh, i mean windows platform right so powershell so all those again, sorry to interrupt i think uh, your screen is uh, frozen for me it is still in uh, the slide is it so i yeah. shared my entire screen is it for the only one or stand yes, uh, i am looking only for your ppt not about your any your powerpoint oh, or yeah oh, okay let me stop sharing and uh, share the full screen Yeah, now we could uh, see the full screen. Yeah, you are able to. Okay. Uh, you are able to see that you are swapping. Yeah, fine. Okay. Right. Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, right. So uh, there are a lot of uh, script, uh, you know, available uh, before. Uh, you know, uh, so bad script, shell script, uh, PowerShell, and then lot of scripting, right? JavaScript. and then uh, you know a lot of scripting available in the market uh, before that as well well with on ruby right. okay so okay so and the, why uh, automation plays uh, at this moment so it's uh, you know it's very popular in well, terms of one minute. Uh, uh, I have one doubt. Uh, yes. Uh, what about the script which are used in uh, Swift uh, in such kind of application development? Uh, which one? Um, Can you Swift shift 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 Swift. dot net okay. or in, in such kind of plat development platform? What kind of base script is used? Uh, okay, you are asking about uh, the uh, .NET uh, application, is it? .NET platform, is it? .NET and Shift, yeah. Okay, .NET is a programming yeah. language, so it's not used in any scripting. So uh, we can make use of JavaScript for web applications in uh, you know .NET platforms. 
so dot net is a framework uh, so in that we have lot of uh, language like c sharp j sharp uh, vb so you know right so uh, I, i could not understand uh, your question so you are asking me what is the script used in uh, dot net is it dot net or swift yes so okay so script is a different one we can make use of scripting in uh, in the framework in the applications actually so the dot net is a framework script is a different one we can make use of script in the framework i mean you can embed the script into the framework okay so are you referring to swift uh, saumian uh, swift yes okay so swift is different okay swift is mainly uh, it's the programming language uh, it's predominantly for uh, apple platform right so where we go and develop application to run it on top of uh, apple ios or uh, maybe mac apple watch tv so all those uh, programs are developed using swift actually it is a programming language whereas whatever we are discussing now uh, it's predominantly towards uh, scripting kind of uh, uh, languages yeah okay okay so yeah i'm sure all right so okay so uh, currently in uh, you know it there are a lot of um, you know automation is going on uh, so based on the uh, available availability of tools and uh, requirements the uh, automation is changing actually so for example if you have some um, devops tools then uh, you can um, you know make use of devops tools for your automation purpose So if you um, you know have uh, orchestration tools orchestration tools in place have you used any orchestration before so orchestration tools for example vrgo search hpvo bmo so there are a lot of uh, you know orchestration tools available so if you have orchestration tools so you can make use of the uh, script uh, in the orchestration tools in order to achieve the automation okay so in devops tools so you can uh, use of uh, you know say cd pipelines there are a lot of tools right configuration management can use uh, ansible puppet chef salt so why i'm telling this uh, okay so if you have um, you know environment having this kind of tools you can make use of any scripting language so based on the supportability so the python is used uh, in any um, you know any tools so python is uh, used in ansible sal stack so and also if you uh, have the orchestration tools uh, you know vmr orchestrator or um, you know uh, microsoft orchestrator so you can make use of python script uh, in order to uh, you know um, in order to perform the complete automation so automation is uh, something defined in two way so one is uh, semi automation so for example uh, so if you are going to uh, if you are going to uh, do some manual steps for example feeding the inputs manually and it will perform the task automatically uh, in script and then you are going to just monitor the output and uh, you know going to close the ticket so those some semi uh, manual uh, you know task is called a semi automated automation semi automated solution so there are two automation types which can be defined so one is semi automated solution and second one is fully automated solution so for example so without any manual intervention 
uh, the the script uh, will take care of all the stuff. So for example, consider so if you're going to get an incident uh, for ABC servers. Uh, so the incident uh, might be McAfee uh, is down or is stopped, service is stopped. So you are getting an alert in the service now. So at the time, what will happen? Uh, the ticket will be assigned to some groups. Uh, so the corresponding group members are supposed to check the uh, ticket and uh, going to check the uh, CA information and manually going to uh, you know check the status in the uh, server console. And once it's stopped, they supposed to uh, change the status manually. Once it's uh, started again, uh, these tickets supposed to update with the commands. The status supposed to change, and uh, and the ticket instant will be closed. So this is the step we are going to do manually. This is this SOP thing, right? Um, so in that, if you are going to do entire thing uh, with the script platform or automation way, then there is no uh, manual touch point or match manual things uh, uh, you know available then it's considered as a fully automated solution so whenever there is a ticket comes in in the queue uh, the script is supposed to check monitor the queue and it will find the exact uh, ticket and will go to the corresponding ca and it will access that server it will check the uh, um, you know service status and if it is stopped, then it will go and change the status back. And uh, once it's supposed to verify again, once verification is done, it's supposed to go back to the ticketing tool. It will uh, go to the corresponding incident and it will uh, uh, update the relevant commands and it will close the ticket. So if there is no manual touch points in this grave, it is called as fully automated solution. So we can achieve the uh, automation in two ways so one is fully automation and the second one is semi-automated with with some manual touch points okay so in order to achieve those two categories we need some tools or scripting so if you already have some tools devops tools you can make use of scripting in order to achieve those touch points so what are the touch points so if you take uh, start from end start to end there are a lot of uh, steps available um, you know you have to access the uh, you have to uh, you know fetch the corresponding um, incident you have to identify um, which incident is supposed to be you have to check get the ca information you have to get the short summary so you have to analyze the uh, you know um, short summary so based on that you are supposed to go to the uh, server log into the server so you can segregate the things into steps so based on these steps you can make yourself um, you know tools like uh, ansible jf salt stack so if you don't have those tools you can make yourself scripting yourself so you can make yourself python um, using the rest api you can go and check the um, you know get the tickets from service now or remedy and you can um, you know analyze the tickets uh, in the python itself and you can able to log the server log in into the server and check the services and do the uh, steps in the using the powershell itself unless you have the tools okay so what i'm telling uh, you can do those automation thing uh, with the help of python itself okay so any questions uh, you can share this notepad after the class is it possible yes yes i will share it so okay so yeah, the okay. Uh, okay every day i mean whenever i'm taking the class at the end of the class uh, i will share the notes and um, uh, you know on the uh, sunday lab session right so i will share the scripts yeah. uh, whatever we are discussing so you just take uh, uh, the script as a reference and you have to do um, you know you can follow these steps and uh, you can try your own machine on the labs day yeah, okay. same logic we can try different type of scripts yes. uh, exactly okay. Right. So have you cleared with this uh, automation stuff? 
why we are uh, you know what are the types and how we can make yourself uh, you know uh, script into that okay so are you good to go Okay, so this one is uh, general. Uh, I, I told uh, so this one uh, the infrastructure automation. Uh, if you see infrastructure is divided into multiple tracks, uh, Windows, uh, Unix, so Citrix, database, storage, network. So there are etc. So there are a lot of uh, you know tracks, uh, you know teams available, right? So each team having its own uh, deliverables. So they they supposed to manage the uh, servers. Uh, so Windows team supposed to manage their uh, Windows machines. Unix team supposed to manage their uh, Unix Linux open source machines. Um, there are uh, you know thousand plus machines available, um, you know for each uh, uh, project. So you, they are supposed to uh, manage. Uh, they are supposed to check uh, all the uh, CR change request, incident request, so all those stuff uh, from the ticketing point of view. And they are supposed to perform health check, uh, other activities as well on the day-to-day -day operations. Okay. So uh, what I'm telling, uh, you know, uh, trying to tell is, uh, so whenever there is an uh, manual operation in place, so we supposed to have uh, these steps called a SOP so if we have SOP you just need to um, you know take that SOP and you are just going to make use of the SOP just analyze that and you can segregate the uh, SOPs into uh, script so you can't um, automate entire SOP into the script um, some cases it is possible but some cases it is somewhat difficult um, so we have to understand what are the feasibility first so for example if i'm taking uh, patching is a activity right so patching is a uh, big one right so if you're going to perform patching you can just split into three um, steps one is pre-patching uh, the patching and post-patching So if you are considering, uh, you know, three steps, each steps having its own, um, you know, sub step as well. So for example, in the uh, repatching itself, you have a lot of things to do. So one is uh, to get the service status, current service status. Yeah, we usually will do kernel water fs tab entry this kind of steps we usually do yes. for uh, linux was windows right. we'll do drives and then services etc kernel oh, so file system so there are a lot of uh, things based on the uh, process right file system all right so in the patching activity you supposed to do it uh, sometime manually sometime uh, and there is some tools available, right? SCCM, um, Big Fix. Yeah, SCCM, uh, that satellite, WCS, SAS, uh, these kind of things we will do. Yeah. It. So, so we will segregate the path, we will filter like that. Uh, some of the environment, they will not block the Java, some of the extra, some applications, they will block during the patches. This kind of filter okay. we will do for during the patches. Yes. So uh, based on the available tool, um, you can make use of that one, right? So the for post patching, you just uh, do the comparison. Okay, take the uh, service again and compare the service. Which one is stopped? Which one is uh, you know working fine? Against the pre patching uh, actually, and you will perform the file system status. So all those stuff you're supposed to perform under the post patching. 
so what i'm telling is uh, so if you are going to do some automation you have, you have to um, you know do the analysis first you have to create uh, you have to segregate the task uh, bit and piece like this and you have to target one by one so you can just start with the simple one and then you can integrate once you completed this one you can go with the patching and you can go with the post patching and then you can integrate all those things into the same script if you want okay so, so here is, we need to create a frames like uh, whatever we don't like uh, so we will create the frames and then after the, all the frames we can merge it and we can do to run the script the usually the same thing we follow in here python uh, yeah 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 so, so that's yeah. that's what i'm like i mean uh, the recommendation is uh, instead of going the entire thing uh, in this in this stretch you can go with uh, you know um, you know simple task task by task mm -hmm. so once you achieved okay. uh, everything you can um, you know uh, just do the testing so if everything is working fine then you can create one more script uh, for post patching <coughs> one more script for patching so once everything is uh, you know working fine then you you can integrate all these things into the same script so you know okay so you can uh, okay what i'm telling is uh, doing the task one by one is easy for you to understand on the initial stage and also uh, once you have and also testing also is very uh, easy for you uh, in order to do entire uh, testing so face by face you can achieve the automation and once you are clear and once you are getting the right um, output outcome then you can integrate the entire thing at a stretch any any questions may i say no okay All right okay then so we'll take a 10 minutes break and then we'll continue again okay This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so let me know once you can able to see my screen. <clears throat> yes, we can able to see. Okay. okay so uh, hope you understand uh, so what is automation and uh, you know how to uh, achieve the automation so what are the types available um, you know in the infra automation how we can uh, you know uh, start with the scripts so any doubts with the uh, with this one Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's start with the Python versions. So the Python started in 1991. Uh, the initial uh, release is the 0 .0, 0 0.0.9. Uh, so now uh, you know the latest version is uh, 3.11. Um, <clears throat> okay, it was released in uh, 2022. So from uh, 2019 onwards they uh, they are releasing the uh, new version in uh, october so previously uh, it was released in uh, different uh, months so after 2019 it was released only in the uh, october months so the next version 3.11 will be released in uh, in this year october so you can uh, able to find uh, the history um, uh, the version history and uh, other details uh, from the official python web page so this is the official python web page python.org so in that uh, web page you can able to find uh, all the details um, <coughs> okay 
okay so this is the official web page uh, so here you can able to find uh, the python uh, uh, information so the, the latest releases news uh, upcoming events so all these stuffs over here and also you can able to uh, download the packages from here uh, so by default uh, if you click on downloads you can able to find the downloads for windows but uh, if you click on other things uh, sorry if i clicked okay so if you if you want uh, for other wires you can um, you know click on the corresponding wires flavors okay so uh, currently uh, the python is uh, we are, which we are using is uh, python 3 so previously we have python 2 uh, currently we are not i mean python is not supporting python 2 anymore they are not going to release any uh, security uh, vulnerability and uh, you know a fix as well so currently uh, they are providing support only for python 3 So usually when uh, there is a bug, uh, then they will release the bug fix. So now, uh, you know, they are not going to do for version 2. They will uh, provide only support for Python 3. So you have to check uh, your system, whether you have which flavors, which version of Python available. First, uh, you have to check, uh, you know, uh, if this has, uh, you know, previous version. I mean, Python 2 or Python 3. If it is Python 3, then it is fine. You can proceed with the scripting. So, if you find uh, Python 2, you can upgrade to Python 3. So, the latest version is 3.11. <coughs> okay. So, before we continue to the uh, installation, so what are the things we need uh, in order to start the development? <laughs> okay, so now um, we are going to do some automation stuff uh, using Python. So consider in this way. So what are the uh, things you supposed to uh, have it uh, before starting the work? So first one is you need a dedicated system. So it might be a um, you know server development server or test server or UAT server. Since uh, we are not going to use production server side, right? so it's a uh, uh, buildable. Uh, so uh, either if you have any development servers in your environment, then you can uh, make use of that development servers uh, for your um, you know scripting development and also testing. So once uh, you have uh, you got the server access, then you need uh, you need uh, the admin access actually. <clears throat> so once you got the admin access, only you can be able to download the packages from the internet, <clears throat> and also you can uh, do your uh, automation hundred percent. So if you are not having the admin rights, it is difficult to uh, install the necessary modules, right? <clears throat> so you supposed to have the admin rights. So the third one. So uh, okay, the testing. Uh, okay, so the in the uh, software package. So the software package is Python actually. So the Python and also IDE. So you need to install the necessary software package. So we have to install the python package <clears throat> so if uh, check whether it's already having python um, on the search box you can able to uh, find uh, with the python so so uh, this python is available or not so if it is not available you can directly go and download the python and install it and uh, if it is already available then you can check it out uh, what is the version so you have to check the version so if this is a uh, old version, then you can upgrade with the new version, Python 3. So uh, it's not, uh, you know, you're supposed to install the latest version. It's up to you to install the latest version. So anyway, um, the thing is you have to use Python 3, any version of Python 3. But if you are using latest version, it will be good. Since it's up to date, you might have all the uh, bug fix, uh, you know, uh, modules done. 
<coughs> so always I prefer to use n minus one. Uh, so what is the n? Is the latest version. So before the latest version is supposed to be good. So try with the n minus one if uh, it's okay. And also IDE. So what is IDE? Uh, it's a <coughs> editor. You can manage your codes. You can um, you know open your files and you can type your, your codes into that and it will be easy to uh, test it out so in terms of python id we have a lot we will discuss it uh, in few minutes so uh, i i would prefer to use uh, visual studio code <coughs> so how many of you used a visual studio code i am using okay so like so if you are using then you know how it is working uh, if you are yeah. not using yeah if, we, if you guys not using then it's fine so anyway we are going to <coughs> i will give the how the how it will work uh, i mean next week <coughs> okay so i prefer to use visual studio code so if you wish there are a lot of id available actually especially for python we have uh, pycharm uh, actually uh, so if you wish to use uh, PyCharm only for Python, then it's fine. It's up to you. You can install it. Uh, otherwise, if you are having Visual Studio Code, it will be, um, you know, <coughs> it is common for all the uh, languages, I would say. So we can use uh, Git uh, in the Visual Studio Code. You can use PowerShell, Perl, Python. So a lot of language it supports. So it's an idea, right? So if you wish to take uh, the common editors then you can go with the visual studio code so otherwise if you want um, only for power i mean only for python uh, editor then you can go with PyCharm. <laughs> okay just a minute This conference will now be recorded. Yep, uh, can you hear me right? Yes, we can hear you. Yep, yeah. yeah. Sorry for the <laughs> interruption. So, uh, what I'm telling is, uh, if you want a dedicated uh, IDE for only for uh, only for Python, then you can go with Python Mandal. So if you wish to use Visual Studio Code, uh, you can make use of Visual Studio Code for all uh, you know platforms. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. See so the worst one, dev servers or the test machines, and uh, which has uh, you know admin rights, and you have to check the, uh, you have to install the uh, necessary packages, <clears throat> and then. Uh, Okay. So uh, you have to look for uh, where you are going to uh, store your files. So if you want to go with uh, the local storage, I mean, uh, you are going to store the scripts into the uh, your own servers, then it's fine. So otherwise, uh, if it is a centralized uh, <coughs> machines, or else it's a Git repository, then <coughs> so you can store all your codes into the Git repository and you can pull it out the code whenever you, if you want to. Uh, modify so if you have the environment then it's fine git repository or gitlab or github um, so if you don't have then you can show it in your local machine okay so always uh, do these steps i mean um, uh, do your testing um, i mean unit testing so whenever we are going to do uh, develop the code uh, you're supposed to do the testing until the release so do you are unit testing <clears throat> okay All right uh, okay any any questions with the prerequisites no okay <clears throat> All right, so before installing the uh, Python, so what we need, we need to check whether uh, this server is having uh, any Python versions. 
okay suppose uh, if it is having 2000 sorry if it is having python 2 then it was discontinued in 2020 actually so, so you have to make sure and uh, system having python 3 so if it is having 2 then you can just uh, you know remove that and then you can install with the python 3 so since python is supported for all platforms so i updated with uh, uh, you know uh, linux mac os and uh, windows uh, so on the linux platform we can check the um, you know python version using the command python3 space iphone iphone -E version so once you uh, you know enter this uh, command on the ter new terminal it will tell you what is the version installed on the machine so if it is python 3 point something then it is it is fine since it's a python 3 right so it is fine yeah it is uh, you know we can go ahead with the scripting so if it is giving any error message like this python 3 command not found so it indicates python 3 is not installed on the machine so you can understand you can easily understand uh, this machine does not have python <coughs> so likewise in mac os also we can use same command python3 space iphone iphone version so from the output we can check it out <coughs> sorry so on the windows machine uh, so you can um, check it on the command prompt so in the command prompt you just go and type python space iphone iphone version or pi space iphone iphone version so let me type it here. So um, in the system, it's installed with Python 3.10.6. So if I am getting this error, sorry, getting this message, it's fine. So Python 3 installed successfully. It's available on this machine. So if I'm not getting this message, I'm getting some, um, you know, Pi is not recognized or Python is not recognized. So th something related uh, this one error message, then Python 3 or Python is not available. So we have to install manually. So the key notes is Python 2 is not supported. Then you have to uh, check uh, and you have to install Python version 3. And second one is uh, you have to check which version is available. So you can check using iphone iphone version flag. Any questions? No. <laughs> okay. All right, so next one is how uh, we can install the Python. So before we are just checking uh, whether Python is already available or not. And also it is having uh, three Python 3. So now we are going to install the Python. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate this one. Um, so uh, I will tell you how to install it. <clears throat> so probably later this class or um, this week, if you have time, just install um, the packages. I uh, install the um, you know Python on your system, uh, which you are going to work for um, you know um, ten weeks. Okay. Uh, I think so, uh, Arag, I think uh, most of people have from infra background. Many of them know uh, how to upgrade and uh, these things are. I am. Okay. I hope. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's easy for you all. But I just yeah. give you the some uh, information around that, so you can refresh it. Yeah. It will be, <laughs> yeah. So if you are from, uh, uh, if you are going to use Linux machines, if you are going to uh, install Python, um, so if it is a Ubuntu, then APT will work, right? So you can do uh, sudo apt get update and then sudo apt get install, and then Python followed by the version if you want, which version you want, you can make you can mention that one. And if you're going to use uh, yum package installer, um, you know, the Red Hat machines and all, we are supposed to use uh, yum package, right? So on that, you have to use uh, yum install rh python version. 
so we support we supposed to be installed on the root admin only so in linux we have to use sudo and in uh, windows we supposed to be admin so in the same command uh, we can use to validate uh, the version is updated correctly so in mac os uh, we have to download the packages from the uh, python org and you can run it uh, manually so for python uh, windows we, there are two options in windows machines one is you can uh, check it out on microsoft store and you can just install the file from that uh, you know path otherwise you can go and download from the python org and uh, you can um, just get, you will get the exe file right so uh, you just go and install that one the uh, the main thing uh, when you are installing on windows there is a checkbox available uh, at step 2 or 3 I, I think so so on the on the checkbox it will um, you know you have to enable so the checkbox will show you whether you want to uh, add environmental variable so the environmental variable which is used to uh, you know uh, manage you, you know already know right environmental variable in linux as well so your python path supposed to be updated in the environmental variable so you have to check the um, you know checkbox so during the installation then in the environmental path will be updated uh, during the installation itself right Okay. So next one is Python environment. Uh, I mean uh, IDE editors and all. So before going into, so I will tell you what is IDE uh, integrated development environment. So its name itself you can able to understand. It's an integrated development environment. Okay. So once you installed uh, the Python, you will get uh, two things. So one is Python and the second one is ideal so ideal is the default ide in python so this is a ide it's a development environment which can be used to type your code and debug your code and test your code the default one if you want you can make use of it but the thing is it is something um, you have to navigate uh, different different uh, um, you know um, different different app so instead of uh, moving that so we can you make use of uh, Visual Studio code by jump so it's a single interface so uh, ideal is we are supposed to use if you are okay to manage with multiple uh, forms but it's quite tedious so that's why I recommend to you make use of Visual Studio or by jump so why we are using uh, IDE it will be easy to manage your files you can save your code reload your saved files uh, and run the code in the environment debug support uh, available you can debug line by line what is happening and what will be the result uh, you know during the execution syntax highlighting so in case if you uh, mistakenly uh, you know type anything then it will show you oh, you know it will show um, underscore i mean uh, uh, okay, in the in the windows, if there is a syntax error, it will show right. Uh, likewise, it will show uh, in the color formatting. So syntax highlighting will be the uh, automatic code formatting. So sometime uh, the open bracket and will be automatically uh, added. So and also some uh, intelligence also are available. So in the intelligence means uh, if you are putting uh, you know dot. It will automatically load the available classes, properties, methods. So it will be automatically shown for you to, uh, you know, <coughs> type it. So there are a lot of editors available, and the basic editors ID is Python shell. So the Python shell is this one. Uh, what, what I'm telling is, so if you type Python, if you can able to find Python 3.10, right? So this is called Python shell. This is again a kind of uh, you know command prompt python command prompt so here whatever you are typing <coughs> then uh, you will get it so it's a single uh, line editor so 
I mean, uh, whatever you are typing, you, um, you can able to do it in uh, single lines. So if you want to perform multiple lines and you want to store the uh, code for reusability, then you, you can't do here. You have to go with the editors. So the ideal, ideal uh, is integrated development and learning environment. So this one also will be installed by default. So if you want to check this one, you can check it out. Okay, so here this is a command prompt, but if you want to create a new file, you can create here. So this is your editor. So once you type your code, you can store it in the hard disk, I mean in the file system. So the Python file is supposed to be .py. .py. So once you uh, you know save the file, uh, I say Python file .py, then we have to go and run this file. Okay. So since this multiple um, you know forms are opening, right? So multiple files are opening. Um, so that's why uh, I am telling uh, it's, it will be something difficult to manage here. So that's why you can go with some other editors. So there are a lot of editors available here. Eclipse, Sublime, Line, Sublime Text, uh, v, VI, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code and all. Uh, I would prefer to use Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's a general purpose uh, IDEs. Uh, so if you want to uh, specific with Python, you can go with the uh, PyCharm, Spider, the Adoni. Okay, so people used to uh, manage with the Visual Studio Code. Sometime uh, they used a PyCharm. Right. So uh, in our class, I, I am going to, uh, you know, give the demo in uh, Visual Studio Code only. So how to install Visual Studio Code? You can just uh, go to uh, in Google and find out uh, Visual Studio Code. And there's a page available. Code.visualstudio.com. So in this uh, page, you can go with the uh, Windows, Debian, RPM, Mac. So if you are going to install on Windows, you can go and, uh, you know, download here and install the exe file as usual. Okay, so once you downloaded, uh, just install it and um, it's a very simple installation. There is no specific uh, information we need to provide. And uh, once you installed, uh, uh, so probably next week, uh, we will create a folder, I mean project folder, and we'll start the uh, you know scripting. Okay, so just a quick check before ending up for today's class. So, so based on the understanding, uh, can you just tell me uh, what is the main version of Python you currently supported? Yep, super. Uh, Python is a dash language. Interrupted. Super. IDE stands for so integrated development environment exactly the first one integrated development environment it's not an engine it's not an uh, internal so it's a integrated development environment okay. all right so just an uh, recap So today we started with the uh, Python definition. So Python is an interpreted, dynamically typed, garbage collected, high level programming language. It is a simple, easy to learn and the syntax and all. And it supports multiple programming paradigms. So why we are using Python? We are using Python in many um, you know, platforms like IT application development, IT infrastructure. Um, you know, um, researchers, better mathematicians, data science, data processing, data analyst. So all those uh, area we can make use of Python due to its open source package availability. So we discussed about compiler versus interpreter, what is dynamically typed, call batch collection, high level and low level programming language. And uh, we discussed about uh, multi-programming paradigm. 
and uh, there is some history about uh, python currently uh, is who is managing and uh, which year it was introduced and uh, it's a case sensitive language so it supports um, you know all the platform of os so, so we discussed about some uh, flavors of python and advantages and uh, disadvantages and the real world python application so web application instagram using django game development battlefield 2 using pychai scientific numerical applications using uh, skypy pandas aa ml tensorflow uh, packages used in a cafe software development enterprise business applications web scrapping uh, you know right have you heard about selenium right it's a testing tool a powerful testing tool uh, in web applications and all so web scrapping yeah. tools actually yeah it's based on python only <laughs> language development so uh, using python itself uh, there are some language available uh, infrastructure automation the uh, cm is um, you know the configuration management tools uh, it's related with i mean it's uh, based on the python only so we can do a lot of things uh, with respect to python in for automation so just highlighted uh, sample use cases uh, okay when it comes to python uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, versions available the latest version is 3.11 so we discussed about um, how to check the python version and also how to install the python for different OS flavors so uh, finally we discussed about uh, the code editors uh, id available why we are going with id and stuff using the command line itself um, and also we discussed about um, you know the, the general uh, editors and also the python specific editors Apart from this, we discussed about uh, what is automation and uh, why we are going automation. So, what are the types available? Um, so, we have the tools, how we can embed the scripting into that tool. And um, if you don't have these tools, then we can go with uh, scripting itself. The only thing is the managing the code. Okay, So, if you are managing the code uh, from the Git, then it's fine so if you already have these tools you can manage the codes even devops also we supposed to manage all the uh, playbooks and all in the git only so for orchestration we can manage the code uh, within the tools itself okay so we discussed how to uh, proceed with the scripting so instead of taking all the uh, steps into um, tech and care so we can start with simple simple task and once we tested and everything is working fine then we can integrate the whole thing we discussed about automation prerequisites in order to start with the uh, development um, in, I, I mean it, this is mainly for the environment i mean production environment so i mean in the uh, projects so we especially need uh, development servers uh, uh, and also uh, admin rights so in the in our classes and all we are supposed to use only um, laptops our laptops right so here we sub we are always having the admin uh, if you are using personal laptop and all okay all right uh, any questions with the today's class no sir okay all right okay so if i am going fast please let me know uh, it is fine to uh, go with the same way or you want to um, slow down a little bit yeah it's okay for me okay yeah okay. it's yeah it's good okay uh, that's yeah okay yeah all right so but since this is a uh, theoretical introduction class so um, you know something um, you know we can go with some kind of fast but uh, hereafter is a um, pure coding right so um, i just need your all attention and also uh, if anything um, not clear then let me know on the same page all right 
okay then so we will meet you next week saturday uh, 5 pm so we'll start uh, uh, okay so before that please install the uh, python and also um, visual studio code on your machines so if you are facing some issues no issue no problem we can meet uh, on saturday right so we can take a um, system sharing and then we'll fix it in case um, you couldn't make it yep ji uh, is there any existing uh, sessions that you have taken uh, to just to go through what the things that have been done okay so we okay so we this is the recording session um okay so it will be stored um, on the um, you know youtube no, i'm not platforms. asking about the recordings uh, okay i'm just asking about uh, the notes. the content huh? notes content, notes yeah. okay yeah. okay uh okay so it is available on git uh, let me check with the stand um okay i, I he will provide the details uh, so Okay then. Uh, if no questions, we can uh, close for it today. So we will catch up uh, next week Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks for joining. Bye.